I'm gonna give you a summary of all the motion clarity settings on this LG C1, okay? And this should apply for the LG CX because it has uh, the same options. I don't know how well it's gonna work there. Maybe it's gonna be even better. I don't know, but I have the C1, so that's what I'm gonna share with you. So we know that sample and hold displays are blurry in movement. Why? Because our eyes don't like it. So when you move the camera, it looks awful, especially at 30 frames per second. So I was surprised with the previous video, many people saying, hey, you know, it's too much input lag. Bro, 30 frames per second input lag is bad. <laughs> That's not news. But you have two options. You either play at 30 frames per second with, with high input lag and looking super blurry in movement, or you have this option <laughs> that this LG C1 gives you, which is basically making that 30 frames per second look like 240 frames per second, okay? With some artifacts, they are there, and with bad input lag. So you decide, if you, if you think that 30 frames per second feels responsive and you much rather use game optimizer mode and look at the blurriness, that's up to you. <laughs> I'm showing you the options. So I'm trying to help. For me to tell everybody, hey, you know, just play at 120 frames, you know? Motion Pro High 120 frames, that looks perfect. That's not gonna help because most people cannot get that level of performance, okay? You need a $5,000 gaming PC to get that. And in many cases, not even with the highest end gaming PC, you can get that level of performance. For example, in Spider-Man, I have a 5800X3D, which is one of the most powerful CPUs right now for gaming, and I am CPU bound. I cannot achieve a rock solid 120 frames. It drops sometimes. So that doesn't help. So if you have a gaming console and you're trying to play Red Dead Redemption 2, that's locked to 30 frames. So me telling you, hey, just play at 60 or 120, that's not helping, okay? If you wanna play Microsoft Flight Simulator, that's 30 frames. You need this. If you're trying to play, for example, the Unreal Engine 5, a matrix demo that's 30 frames per second no matter what computer you have if you are on console doesn't matter so the only option you have to move the camera and not see that blurriness which is awful especially on these OLED TVs is by using this setting so that's what I'm sharing with you if you try them the input lag is too bad for you well just <laughs> enjoy the slightly better input lag if you think you're getting a better input lag which i don't think so <laughs> because at 30 frames the input lag is gonna be bad and i see absolutely no difference i'm gonna make a video about it i see absolutely no difference at 30 frames per second between game optimizer mode and any other mode okay boost mode is not gonna help allm on your ps5 is not gonna help at 30 frames per second it's going to feel bad and input lag is gonna feel bad but I'm gonna talk uh, about that on, on another video so on this one I'm gonna give you a summary of all the motion smoothing settings all the motion clarity settings on this LG C1 so I already gave you the settings for 30 frames I'm gonna give you the settings for 60 now okay so for 60 frames we go to all settings and again the TV is on game console mode. It is on standard mode, okay? Any other mode that is not game optimizer. So it allows you to use the motion clarity settings. So we go down here to advanced settings. Let me, we go to advanced settings and clarity. We go to advanced clarity and we scroll down to true motion. So here on True Motion, to play at 60 frames per second, 60 hertz, we are gonna use the blur, okay? The blur instead of the other for 60 frames. So the blur in 10 and OLED Motion Pro in medium. So that is going to give you the same motion resolution 
as 120 frames per second, 120 hertz with Motion Pro on high. And that is phenomenal, <laughs> absolutely amazing. So actually, this is the setting that I am gonna be using the most, okay? And if I can recommend something, of course, on the console, all those 60 frames per second games, you can apply this setting and you're going to get a s amazing experience in movement. And the input lag now is actually very good. It is not lower than 120, of course not. But it is very good, very, very good. And I'm gonna show you that on a separate video. I'm gonna do a separate video just about input lag, okay? And I'm going to put this TV side by side with my CRT monitor, okay? There's nothing better than a CRT. And I'm gonna show you side by side my controller and the input lag comparison between this uh, OLED with all the motion handling techniques and the CRT, okay? And you decide for yourself. So this is gonna be the option that I'm gonna be using the most because actually the motion uh, artifacts are almost not visible at all. Like if I pan the camera super fast, right now I cannot see any defects. Sometimes uh, you can see some minor artifacts on the character, not in Spider-Man, I cannot see anything. I was playing yesterday Horizon Zero Dawn and doing this, which nobody does, by the way, at 60 frames, if you do this, you're gonna get a headache because it's a blurry mess, okay? <laughs> Unless you have a plasma TV, the plasma TV does look amazing in movement, but this OLED TVs sample and hold blurriness, okay? You do this and it looks awful. So now at 60 frames with these settings, you can actually move the camera and it looks fantastic. The input lag is good, and the artifacts are almost non-existent. I, can, I cannot see them. Basically, it's very, very difficult to see any defects. So now, I am able to use ray tracing, max out all the graphics, use DLSS, DLSS with dynamic resolution scaling, and I am basically getting the max out experience looking looking like 240 frames per second sample and hold. Can you get 240 uh, frames per second with this game max out? No, you cannot. <laughs> so this is amazing. So that's the other setting. So of course, the best experience you can get is 120 frames per second Motion Pro on high. You can also use 100 frames, 100 hertz locked and use Motion Pro on high. Or if you want a little bit more brightness, you can use Motion Pro on auto. I made a video about that. It doesn't look as good in movement uh, at 100 frames or 120, but it does look brighter. And 100, 120 frames already looks better in movement. So it's a trade-off. I would still recommend high. Also, on these two uh, options that I'm giving you for 30 frames and 60 frames instead of using Motion Pro on medium you can use auto you can use Motion Pro on auto so let me show you that and the difference is so small that I actually have a hard time telling the difference on that UFO test very very hard time telling the difference but I know medium is better, but it's very, very difficult to notice. So if you need a little bit more brightness with this setting instead of medium, you can use auto here, okay? So that's it, that's the three settings. You, you basically have three settings that are the best for motion handling on this LG C1. You have settings for 30 frames per second, and you can make 30 frames per second look like 240 frames that is so huge that who cares <laughs> I mean I do care about input lag I wish it was better but you cannot ask more uh, out of 30 frames it's just not enough uh, but you can make those 30 frames look like 240 
you can make 60 frames look like 240 so they look the same in movement the difference is at 60 with the blur you get a lot less artifacts almost none almost none to the point that on this game I was playing yesterday I couldn't see a single problem with it <laughs> and I was looking for it I couldn't see any problems I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn and I was able to see uh, when I did this some minor artifacts but it's so small also on the aim like when you aim on a shooter when you move the camera that aim you can see some uh, it's not a trailing artifacts it's like the aim becomes double when you move it it becomes double but the double image on the aim is uh, it has transparency so it's not it's not as visible so if you don't look for it you're not gonna see it uh, but try it if it bothers bothers you what you can do at 60 frames instead is you can use motion pro on high and I actually that's the setting I've been using all this time so without using the blur you can be on game optimizer mode and just play at 60 frames 60 Hertz and use motion pro on high and that gives you 120 frames sample and hold like motion resolution which is not bad it is not bad uh, so it looks like the plasma basically so the plasma is 60 Hertz but because it's an impulse display 60 Hertz on the plasma looks like 120 on these OLED TVs so maybe a little bit better <laughs> so there you go that's the that's the summary I'm going to post on the comments and also on the on the yeah on the comments and on the description of the video I'm going to post the summary of all the settings and to get the visibility because when you use motion pro the screen becomes darker uh, to get enough brightness you have two options basically you can either use the HLG trick which is what I can recommend okay I can recommend you this because this is not going to void your warranty this is not dangerous at all so I can definitely recommend it and it looks fantastic you can just go to settings uh, you can step on select mode and you type in 111 3111 and you're going to come to this secret uh, menu you change the EOTF to HLG and you get a lot of brightness so you can do that or or you can access the service menu turn off TPC and GSR and change the module HDR to on and that module HDR to on is going to allow you to get more brightness on SDR but I cannot recommend that because that is going to void your warranty it is not going to but I have to say that because every time you access the service menu there is a log that records all the service menu access and everything that you do there so but based on what I've researched the engineers they don't really care about that but I have to say just for your safety and for mine I have to say that that will void your warranty but what you can do if you have any problems with the warranty just access the service menu change the settings back up to standard you turn on TPC turn on GSR module HDR to normal and they are not going to care okay but I have to say that that's risky that's pushing the panel beyond the factory limits because that module HDR on can basically give you 400 nits full screen okay so <clears throat> that's a lot of brightness that's not what LG is allowing you by default these LG TVs can do full screen like 130 160 nits so from less than 200 nits to 400 nits full screen that's a lot more okay <laughs> that's a lot more but that's the only way basically you can use SDR with this motion pro settings okay so when what I do uh, is for SDR with motion pro on medium because the the brightness doesn't drop that much what I do 
Uh, I'm going to show you my settings for SDR using these motion uh, handling techniques. I basically use the brightness, 100% pixel brightness, gamma 2.2, contrast 85, and I use clarity, uh, and I use the color gamut on auto detect, uh, color depth 55, warm 50, okay? So, and if I am going to play at 120 hertz of black frame insertion, so Motion Pro on high, so if I'm gonna play like that, then I just max out the contrast, uh, gamma 2.2, and I get enough brightness to play like that. So that's it. That's the summary of all the settings. Uh, when you play with the HLG trick, uh, the color gamut, I use it on native, uh, saturation 50, warm 50. But you can try auto detect 55, it's going to look uh, more desaturated and more washed out than SDR. That's why I use that color gamut on native, especially when you turn on dynamic tone mapping. So the HLG trick with dynamic tone mapping on is going to give you enough visibility to use this technique. And actually, if I'm going to use that, what I do is I lower the brightness. Okay, because HLG with dynamic tone mapping on is actually super bright. Uh, if, I, if I'm not using Motion Pro on high, if I am not using that on high, on medium, it will be too bright. So what I do in that case, I just lower the screen brightness setting. I lower that from the default 50. I lower that to 47, okay? I lower this from 50 to 47. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna show you, again, I'm gonna show you many examples of games. I'm gonna show you the input lag, compare the CRT with this, so you can see the input lag. So that I can show you. I can show you the input lag. You can see it because you can see my, my controller, see the response on the screen. But what I cannot show you is how amazing the motion looks because you know, YouTube is capped to 60 and it's, you're gonna, it's impossible. <laughs> I cannot show you the, how good it looks in motion. But trust me, trust me, this TV is doing magic. You can get the same motion clarity no matter what, no matter if you're using 30 frames, 60 frames or 120 frames. And the difference is gonna be input lag and artifacts. So 120 frames, Motion Pro High is perfect. <laughs> the only issue is the brightness that you lose and you can get it back by using those settings that I share with you. Uh, you know, 60, almost no artifacts, same motion clarity. The input lag is a little bit higher, but it is very good. And 30, the input lag is unfortunately not perfect, but it is usable. Trust me, I have a high-end gaming computer. I know what 120 frames feels like. That 30 frames, and I'm going to show you that again, because I already showed you that. that some people said, oh, it's too high input lag. Of course, it's 30 frames. <laughs> but I'm going to show you that again. Of course, the input lag is not going to be amazing, but with 30 frames, you can still get 240 frames uh, like motion clarity sample a whole so that is awesome so let me know if you have any questions that's the summary of all the settings uh, i discovered so far and hopefully we can keep learning because i don't know why lg doesn't give you like a guide of all those settings where, where are those settings where are they i discovered them myself i haven't seen any videos any articles on the on their LG website is not there. Like who knows? I discover them just by trial, you know, trial and error. So, yeah. Let me know if you have any questions.